Hi, Tim Spann here. I'm the Principal Developer Advocate for Data in Motion at Cloudera. And my talk today is Unlocking Financial Data with Real-Time Pipelines. I run a blog, do a bunch of events in the New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania area. Uh, reach out if you're interested in learning more about streaming, uh, streaming with real-time, streaming with uh, machine learning, streaming from the edge, lots of different things. Let's get into it. We don't have too much time here. What is real time? Depends who you're talking to. Usually in financial, you know, you're talking as low as possible. You want to have the lowest possible latency when you're doing things like trading. Most data, though, is not in the training realm. Maybe it's, uh, you know, a second, sub-second. That tends to be where most data is. And we'll see a lot of different ones. To do real time, it'd be nice if you could do things with just one application, but it tends to require different systems working together. And with the open source, we can get a lot done for massive size projects, which tend to be the case for financial. Now, data does not just sit somewhere and never have to go anywhere. You have to share data between different clouds. Maybe it's because your organization has grown over time, or you have to deal with partners, or there's some open group that requires you to share data. And that can be in all the major clouds, on-premise, private cloud. And getting all that data distributed and processed is difficult if you don't have an open source, low-code tool like uh, Cloudera Dataflow to manage that. And very often we'll have sources of data at the edge this could be at an ATM, this could be in a bank branch, this could be in a moving uh, vehicle, could be in a plane, train, lots of different places. Minify lets us run on any of these devices or run on a container next to another application. Lots of power from being able to run at the edge and run uh, machine learning and deep learning models there, push different resources there on demand and figure out what's going on there, change the flows get that data very often we'll push that right into Kafka where Flink could do some real-time analytics on it, uh, powering machine learning, uh, you know, open data lakes, visualization alerting, uh, filling all different types of data stores and doing real-time decision-making on that. And for financial, very often we'll start with NiFi where it'll get financial data from somewhere, it could be change data capture, could be a REST feed. Lots of different interfaces have data. And often it's real time that event happens. I want to get that right away. Someone charged a credit card. I want to know right away. All these things happen immediately. Make decisions on them right away. See if there's fraud. See if something's going wrong. Distribute that to everyone who needs to do it. Real time analytics with Flink SQL, but also real time machine learning and super fast data stores like uh, Kudu, like Iceberg, get that data immediately and you know learn from it. And that could be lots of different places these are running, which is nice. This new hybrid environment, you could be in any of the public clouds, you could be in private cloud, be in your own data centers, be at the edge in a moving truck or an ATM, like we mentioned, getting data off of databases, files, logs, being able to Filter those events real time, figure out who needs to get them, even if it's multiple places, and then being able to feed that data to vector data stores to uh, optimize your large language model so you don't have to spend as much on retraining or constantly using those expensive GPUs. And Hugging Face, OpenAI, Watson XAI, Clutter and Machine Learning, all those are well integrated and securely interfaced with our uh, streaming platform. And again, different uh, things we often use with LLM, things like live Q&A, weather reports, documents, data feeds, data stores, all of them, getting them in with NiFi to clean them up, enrich them, make sure they have timestamps, run any real-time alerts, get those things into Kafka so we could do that real-time reporting with Flink get that stored into a uh, open uh, lake house with iceberg, get all that to our uh, AI, 
Uh, for me, it's typically hugging face or Cloudera Machine Learning or IBM Watson XAI. Very easy to do that, visualize that. And very often having a vector data store like Milvis, Chrome or Pinecone makes things a lot more performant. Kafka comes up all the time because we need a place where we could distribute messages, never lose them, decouple things away from all these different producers and consumers of data, because it's not just one anymore. You know, database may push something out with a change capture, but that has to be consumed by a Spark apps that does, you know, aggregate uh, calculations one that needs to uh, feed a partner system, real-time analytics looking for fraud, hundreds of things, all from the same data, scales out very well, very understandable with PubSub, scales out as big as you need to go. This is the backbone of what you need. Start with Kafka, add Flink on top of it, so you could have continuous SQL regardless of where the data is coming from, how much it is, and it's regular SQL, and it just waits for events. You could get them. You could do everything you expect to be able to do with SQL, joins, be able to do uh, create tables, materialized views, write to different data stores, connect to batch data as well. So it's not just real-time Kafka data coming in. I can make sure... I receive or push data to HDFS, Ozone, Iceberg, Kudu, Hive, S3, you know, different JWC data stores, get data from uh, tables as they change, whether that's Oracle or DB2 or Postgres, doesn't matter. Be able to do things like aggregates and group buys and having and joins and do all that complex data as events arrive and then make that available in a format that I can use very easily uh, with my data scientists. They could read that with their pandas in the Jupyter Notebook very easily. They don't have to know about installing Kafka if it's the data ready. We'll make sure the data is ready for them, always available for them in super fast cache with the most recent values that make sense or aggregates, whatever makes sense for their different context. And as we're getting data, we're taking these streams, getting them not just into uh, the lakes for that long-term analytics, regardless of what platform that is, but able to make decisions on that same stream of data while it's coming in, as well as aggregates at the same time. So if something's broken, something's breaking, something's overheating, something's out of money, something's going wrong, we know right away. We don't have to wait for you know, a minute, an hour, something to pass. We could do it right away. The most powerful part of this platform and unique in the world is Apache NiFi, over 17 years old, came out of the NSA who needed to be able to do things incredibly fast, very easily with a simple UI and scale out as big as possible on any type of data, start, stop things, and being able to know what's going on at any time. As you see in the last four years, the uh, community has exploded. It's used everywhere. Every financial company, every big company in the world is using NiFi somewhere. If you don't know that you're using it, there's someone on a laptop using it. You should get in front of that. Make sure you manage that. Make sure they have secure latest versions of things. Always good to have. And see what's going on with the latest version. Four or five years ago, it was great. Now it's even better, more options, more capabilities, more environments to run. We can run things on the edge with a tiny C++ footprint. You know, you got to put this in an ATM or in a phone or in a tablet or on uh, some truck. Java, all the features of the big boys, but customized without the UI to run faster. Registry for all your version control, the ability to run in a Kafka Connect environment just using a simple uh, NiFi flow. NiFi to run as if it was a Lambda or Azure function. This uh, stateless compute in the serverless architecture, really nice way to do that. Or just running Kubernetes, scale up and down as you need to. 
very easy to use one style of coding, use the same code, run it literally everywhere on running devices, in the cloud, in Docker, on real servers, on bare metal, in all the clouds, anywhere in the world to communicate real time between them with no coding and the ability to have all that version control and security, governance, lineage, everything all together, very easy. And with the new version coming, ability to easily access a rules engine, stateless uh, rerunning of things everywhere, Python API to run whatever you need, integration with all the latest uh, LLM tools and vector data stores, the coming Java 21, which has amazing performance improvements and pretty amazing virtual threads. Lots of real stuff is coming. Uh, very cool to see what's going to be happening in the near future. Feature that no one else has, very important for finance, is provenance. We track the lineage of each piece of data as it comes through the system real time so you know exactly what happened, when, how it changed, the size, all those aggregates, and I could push them as first class data anywhere you need them or write code against them in real time against these Providence events. Very powerful way to make sure you know what your data is, confirm it, double check it, and let people know you have this audit trail that is always available and can be pushed to them real time. And the ability to work with any kind of record. You know, you need data. It kind of looks like structured data. It's semi-structured or it is structured. All the same to us. I can run SQL on it and automatically convert it without knowing the fields, without knowing the types, know what data is in there. You know, I can automatically determine it's a parquet file and convert it to Avro. All these type of things very easily. And things can be broken up into records. This is very performance. A unique feature of NiFi is it doesn't have to have this. If your data is an image, if your data is a PDF, a Word document, Excel sheet, or some weird format that you've come up on your own, or is a new format that isn't very structured, and there's no way to kind of script it like you can with a log or window event or syslog or grok, you could just operate on it as if it's a binary. And we work with images as well. We can send them to uh, different uh, AI models. Uh, you know, we can get metadata from lots of different uh, meta types. And you could do anything you want with these files and very easy to do, whether it's structured or unstructured. Like I said, ability to run SQL against these things. We built a whole catalog of these so you could share these between yourselves or with the community. Makes it very easy to back up and deploy things whenever you need. Give you a wizard to deploy things to the cloud. Size it how you need to. Set up whatever uh, key performance indicators you need. Set your parameters and run. Scale up, scale down. Uh, Kubernetes on public cloud, pretty powerful. And being able to monitor things however uh, you need to. Dashboard shows you things at a glance. Again, this is great for the admins out there to see all the different flows running. I'm able to know if something's going wrong. Maybe I need to add more resources. Up to you. Change things as you need to. An open data lake that's built with uh, real-time streaming. So I can be hybrid. I can get edge data, first-class data everywhere. Very easy to use uh, stream processing, whether it's a drag and drop UI, dashboards, or SQL. AI is integrated at all the key points you need it to be. All the tooling and platform is open, scalable, very easy, easy to monitor, uh, secure, and govern, all with the same set of open source tools that run in any environment. Very easy to do. Get your data sources, collect them, filter, enrich. Get them into Kafka for buffering and for distribution. Get them into Flink for your SQL processing. And these can be stored to your different uh, operational data stores, databases, wherever they may be. 
from iceberg to ozone to Postgres to Mongo to Kudu, Snowflake, all the different data warehouses out there. Do that securely. Do that with full observability, full scalability, and as cost effective as possible. And move that workload wherever in your hybrid environment makes sense. And it doesn't matter what the data starts at or where it ends. All can be managed in one place at any scale. And obviously today, everyone's interested in these large language models. What you could do now with some of this uh, AI is pretty impressive. That is integrated as part of our environments. We've already been tested and worked with the major vector databases. We have the ability to run all the data engineering you need with Spark, Python, Dask, and Ray. Work with all the AI and LLM libraries out there, whether it's Langchain or Ray or anything from NVIDIA, with the ability to do whatever you need in Python. And all the models tested from Hugging Face, from uh, IBM Watson X AI, OpenAI, wherever your lot, PyTorch, TensorFlow, wherever they're running from at any scale, and be able to integrate that so I could do real-time streaming classification with NiFi or Flink, and I could deploy models on the fly, even deploy them to the edge, have them deployed, tested, then run, and then get that data as part of multiple streams, whether it's running at an edge, whether it's running anywhere in the cloud, any container, any kind of place you need it to run, bare metal, we run that at any scale while being able to give you the full life cycle of large language models, ingest your data, wherever it's coming from, wherever it runs, however, doesn't matter. We'll get that into the stream, get that stored wherever you need it to be. We enrich it as it comes in. I can enrich it with vector data stores, with relational databases, with NoSQL stores, get that into a buffer, whether that's Kafka, Pulsar, JMS, whatever you have. Get that into real-time analytics with Flink. Combine things, do alerts, get things to data stores, build materialized views to build applications and dashboards. Send out real-time data to uh, Slack and different uh, Discord and wherever you need to send messages, email. Being able to ingest, edit, alter, and write out all kinds of Google and Microsoft documents been able to interact with the edge. Like I said, an edge can be an ATM. Edge could be a container. It could be anywhere. It could be your desktop where I need to monitor for cybersecurity. I can monitor real-time cameras. Ingestes, combine all these things together, make things more popular. And then I could funnel all this data into whatever models you have out there. It doesn't matter if it's Hugging Face, Watson X, Clutter Machine Learning, you're running it on your own uh, model runner, third-party tools, open source, closed source, SaaS. All those are very simple. We've got a bunch of examples out there if you want to take a look with all the source code. I've done some with sentiment analysis, with uh, some large language models from IBM Watson XAI, including uh, Granite and Google Flan. Lots of different options out there. To distribute, deploy everything wherever it needs to be. And in this example, we show you how to deploy that to a edge device. That edge device could have GPUs. They could be pretty powerful, or it could just be a server. Whatever is an edge to you is an edge to us. Store your data in so many different data stores concurrently, whatever makes sense, you know, from Kudu to Snowflake, Whatever is your data store, we'll store it to you for you at scale, any type of data, no worries there. If you're interested in trying out some open source LLM, we've got everything set up so you could do that with a couple of clicks. So if you're interested, reach out and you could do CML. Uh, thank you for going through these slides. You'll have these available. I just wanted to get through that. I know I don't have too much time. I wanted to show you some real code and I'll go through as much as I can in my little time I have here. Uh, this is the edge manager. This is where I could see all my devices responding and see, okay, what's going on here? 
I've reached out to one of my agents. So when it phoned back in, it gave me a debug and I could download that, look at the logs. So I never have to be on that machine. If I need to change what's running there, I know everything about that machine. I can redeploy new versions. I could push out images, new class libraries, new uh, versions of a model easily. And within this environment, very easy for me to add new steps to a process, change things, add custom libraries. Here, I'm gathering some sensors, setting some values, checking the results, pushing to Kafka, which it couldn't be any easier. And I could use any kind of security or transactions you need there. And also making a REST call out to a NiFi server so I could stream that data in. And if I take a look here, I've got NiFi acting as a universal REST endpoint. Yeah, I could send anything there and then let NiFi decide how I want to process that. So it's listening on a port 998 anything that comes in, I stop the data because I can control data flows real time with the simple click of a button. Or I can automate that with command line tools, REST interface, or your favorite DevOps, or have NiFi control another NiFi instance using NiFi. That's how powerful we are. Right here, I have it paused because every step in NiFi is a configurable buffer so that I'll never lose data. If this fills up and I could decide how that fills up, I could set customizable thresholds and I can make that dynamic or use a machine learning or mathematic model to determine how big that should be. When that gets full, this will stop sending data and then it'll fill here. And it works its way back up, back pressure chain until it doesn't, uh, you know, either catches up or it's restarted. I restarted, now the data is processing. Let's look at that provenance. Again, I could push this anywhere or have someone query this real time with the rest endpoints. And I could see what kind of data is in here. This is my metadata. This is a lot of useful data. What device this came off of, a unique ID, what was its IP, all that kind of fun stuff. Plus the content is always available. It could be encrypted. Could be in lots of different formats, but here it's just regular JSON. I did a route on this to say, what should I do with the data? And I sent it to this processor. This has a little uh, controller, so I, I don't send all the data at once. Some downstream systems can't take that. Here I push that data to Kafka dynamically, whatever it needs to go to. And then I could see here what changed is one message was sent, it could have been a thousand. And then I can go right into that, uh, that topic and see what that data was. So if we look at the topic, uh, 400 sensor, that is this one here. And I could take a look, see the data that came through. Uh, this is a great way to debug, to see things are in my system and anyone can consume this. For example, a real-time job within uh, Flink SQL, very easy for it to read data, lots of different endpoints, whether it's the results of uh, some LLM or what have you, very easy to send that data to Kafka. We also have another example flow here where I'm doing a bunch of different uh, LLM integration, very easy to do. I can grab data from real-time government sources, even if the format is weird, like here the data is in RSS, I convert it, flatten it, make it available in an easy to use format. And then I push it to Kafka. I could also push it to email and I could have NiFi act as an email server. If I wanna do testing, can push it to Kafka, can push it to other endpoints anywhere in the world. And I can also, when I'm ready, maybe drop it in a database. It could be Oracle, it could be Postgres, could be DB2. Again, do you see any code there? Point to a connection pool, give it a table name and a schema name. All that could be dynamic. There's no hard coding of field names. When data changes, we have convertible schemas or NiFi will figure those out for you on the fly.
really easily. I could get things like stock data and I'm getting uh, stock data for some rest endpoints here and I'm converting them. Here I wanna make sure I have a timestamp and a unique ID, again, very important for tracking data. And then I'm gonna push that into Kafka, again, to share this stock data with whoever needs it, whatever application, super simple, just to give you a quick taste of it. Uh, thanks for coming to my talk. If you wanna unlock more information, definitely check out some of my URLs here. Come to my meetups. I've got them in New York, in New Jersey, and online. Thanks for attending my talk. I hope you learned a little bit.